let's face it, some words make us cringe. The P word is like that. It makes us uneasy and uncomfortable. It makes us squirm, look down, and sometimes we look straight ahead and pretend that we didn't hear it. The P word is philanthropy. <laughs> and we have some very strong feelings about it. We connect that word with rich and famous folks. You know who some of them are. Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Warren Buffett. But most philanthropists are just ordinary people who are willing to donate generous amounts of time, money, and resources to causes that are meaningful to them. Now, I know that story well because I'm one of those ordinary people. Trust me, I wasn't born into wealth. I was just an only child with doting parents who gave me everything I needed or wanted. That was my life, not theirs. My parents were two generations removed from slavery. They were born in poverty. They lived in poverty. And they jumped from poverty to pioneers in their families for being the first to graduate from college. This amazing accomplishment allowed them to have good careers, and they were highly regarded in our community. My mother was an admired teacher, and a school has been named in her honor. My father was an esteemed workforce development counselor with his very own local television show. But you know what? My parents never forgot their humble roots because they were constantly paying it forward to a long, long list of family, friends, and strangers. It was pretty clear to me that their road to college was a pretty bumpy one. They had lots of stories about those experiences, but the one story that stood out the most was my mother's story. My mother applied to the then Florida College for Women, but she was denied admission due to her race. She could pass by the college, she could look through the front gate, she could not get in. Ironically, the change in my family in 1972 was my admission to the university. Guess what? It was at that same front gate that my parents dropped me off, bid me farewell, and gave me some parting advice. Liz, Liz, don't forget to look back and don't forget to help others. That day, I walked away from the comfort of my childhood, and I took my first steps towards that American dream, getting a college education. In 2022, 15 million students arrived at college campuses across this country. Some saw this as an opportunity of a lifetime. Others saw it as an obligation. Did you know that one third of all college students are first generation? You might ask yourself, who are first-generation students, and why does it matter? First-gen students come from families whose parents don't have a bachelor's degree. Often, these families earn lower wages because they have lower paying jobs. And to top that off, the cost of a college education continues to rise, making the good old American dream an illusion for millions of students and their families. I think Barack Obama said it well when he said, Higher education cannot be a luxury for the select few. It is an economic necessity for every family, and every family should be able to afford it. Thankfully, the Higher Education Act provides a safety net. We call that financial aid in the form of loans and grants for students who really do need money for college. But you know what? Sometimes financial aid falls short, and when that happens, Scholarships become game changers. Now imagine this. You are the number one student in your medical school class. It's your last semester, but your dream is fading fast. You're tapped out financially. You don't have any money. You can't borrow anymore. Your family is flat broke. You pack your bags to leave the university, but on your way out, you share this news with the dean. But you assure him that as soon as you earn enough money, you're going to be back and you're going to finish and you're going to be a great doctor one day. That's going to happen. To your surprise, the deed inform you that emergency funds are available because a generous donor endowed a scholarship for students just like you. Now that was a game changer. 
I know that story well. That medical student was my husband. Colleges depend upon the generosity of donors to endow scholarships. These donors create a playing field for first generation, underrepresented, and low income students. By following scholarships, the donors make investments that far exceed any stock market profit. You see, their ROI, or their return on investment, produces the next generations of doctors, lawyers, teachers, engineers, scientists, and so much more. Donors come from all walks of life. They have generous hearts and a big vision, just like Osceola McCarty. Osceola was born dirt poor. She had a sixth grade education. Her profession? She was a washerwoman in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. She washed clothes by hand on a scrub board. She did it for decades. Her office hours? They were from sunup sun up to sundown. At her death at the age of 86, Osceola went from being faceless to famous because she became the largest African-American donor at the University of Southern Mississippi. In her will, she bequeathed the university $150,000 to endow scholarships for needy and deserving students. Osceola didn't have a fancy name and she didn't have a fancy lifestyle. She was just an ordinary person. And yes, she was a philanthropist. University endowed scholarships like Osceola's are the gifts that keep on giving, but they are in perpetuity. I'm just a girl from East Tampa. I never thought I would have rolled up my sleeves to become a teacher, to become an assistant principal, a principal, a school district administrator, a national conference presenter, or a national educational consultant. Over time, I also became an advocate and a cheerleader for 10,000 first-generation students. These were poor students from poor families who lived at or below the poverty level. All their parents wanted for their students was just a slice of the American dream. They wanted their students to go to college. My job was to make it happen, and I did. Over time, as my career continued to climb, my parents' boomerang call, don't forget to help others, grew louder and louder and louder. I answered the call by becoming a major donor and fully endowing four scholarships, two at Howard University, two at Florida State. My goal was really simple. All I wanted to do was to help as many students as possible cross the college completion line. So far, 20 students have crossed that line. I can't wait for the next 20 to do, to do the same thing because I'm going to be there to cheer them on. Life has so many unexpected twists and turns. Mine has. My mother was denied admission to FSU due to her race. Today, I'm a trustee on the FSU Foundation Board, which is both an honor and a privilege. I remember preparing for that new trustee orientation meeting. I've got to admit I was a little excited. I will share that I did all of my homework, including all of those onboarding activities. I even lined up all of my colored highlighters. I used each one to read and review the foundation material. I thought I was prepared, but I wasn't. I wasn't prepared for how I would feel emotionally. Hearing the foundation staff talk about the university's billion dollar endowment touched my heart and it grabbed a tiny piece of my soul because in that moment my eyes began to water. In that moment, I thought about my life's work with first-generation families and their students. In that moment, I thought about my four endowed scholarships. But in that moment, mostly, I thought about all the donors, including all of the ordinary people who made that endowment happen. 
there were more meetings that weekend. It was an absolutely wonderful weekend, filled with red carpet activities and VIP events and amazing behind the scenes tours of the university. But there is something, something I needed to do by myself. You see, my past had intersected with my present, and I needed to return to my beginning, and I did. I returned to that beautiful, picturesque, iconic front gate of the university one more time. The first time I went through that gate, I was a privileged college freshman. Fifty years later, I went through as a privileged senior citizen. But this time was different, vastly different, completely different, wildly different, because this time, things finally clicked. This time, I finally got it. This time, finally, finally, I understood the assignment. Being privileged is the responsibility to help others. Now, I know you don't know me well, but I do have a favor to ask. The next time you hear the P word, don't cringe, don't look away. The P word is just ordinary people who are willing to make a difference. People like you. You and you. Thank you. Thank you.